for real world stuff. So, but first we have to have a foundation, obviously, before we can do anything. So that's why we did kind of the dice game. Some of that stuff will be introduced, and some of it we're going to do like today. We're going to talk about fractions and why you have to do it a certain way. Um, you can move up one, Chancy. You don't want to? Okay. I'm just worried about the, you know, flying hands, but whatever. Okay, so, so let's talk about fractions in general and then how they kind of work in math. Because we have to have the basics of it before we can actually do stuff with it. So let's talk about fractions. Look this bugs kids. I have never figured it out because so I actually fractions is easy, but whatever. How much of that pie is filled in? Some amount. Yes? Is it bigger or less than a half? Bigger. Bigger. Is it bigger or less than a fourth? Bigger. Bigger than a fourth? Yes. Is it bigger or less than three fourths? Less. So what is it? Uh -huh. That was a good guess. Go ahead. I'd say it's like two thirds. Exactly. Good job. Bigger. That's like two thirds. Good it's job. It's like three fifths. Okay. Now how about this one? Three fourths. This one's a lot easier because you think fourths and two sixteenths. So this is three fourths. Right, no. Now, we're going to do a few problems. You'll notice them written up here at the top. All of them are using two thirds and what? Three fourths. So we want to kind of picture it and then along with kind of see how it works, okay? So how would I add two thirds and three fourths? How would I add those? Well, think about these two. If I add this shaded area to this shaded area, am I going to have more than a full pie? Yes. So before you even start, when you do fractions, uh, sit over here in front of Chancey. Trust me. Um, Chancey is killing me. You don't want that. So. Where were you sitting? I can't. Why are you Does he just slap her? He's like, take her chair. Okay, so let's think about this. So before we even start, we have over one, right? Is what we're thinking is going to be our answer. Because if you add this and this together, they're going to be over one. So now how do I add fractions in general, though, using math? I have to have a common one. Denominator. How do we get a common denominator? And it may or may not be the lowest common denominator, by the way, when we start getting bigger numbers, but it'll always work. So it's always easy to do. How can I get a common denominator? What can I times the three by? Four. The other denominator. And I multiply it both top and bottom. How do I multiply it both top and bottom? What have I really multiplied by if I multiply by four over four? What is four over four reduced to? One. I've only multiplied by one. What's, uh, I don't know, Kaylee times one? Two Kayleys. No, <laughs> one Kaylee. <laughs> Still Kaylee. If I times uh, McAllister by one, what do I get? I still get just McAllister. I haven't changed anything by times him by one. Everybody got that? So this is just times him by one. That's why I do both bottom and top by four. Because I don't want to really change the nature of the, I don't want to change the problem from an addition problem, I just want to change the denominator so I can add. Okay? Now, how about this one then? What, what should I change that one to? Times up the top and bottom by what? What do I got to times the four by to match that? The three. Notice if you times by the opposite denominator, so the three gets times by the four, and the four gets times by the three, you'll always get a common denominator. You might want to put that in your notes. So right, take out your notes, put that in there. To get a common denominator, multiply the opposite value. Now this is where I'm going to show you something that's kind of cool. So I'm going to multiply the opposite denominator's value. Write that in your notes. To get a common denominator, multiply the opposite denominator's value, both top and bottom. Okay? To find a com and when do you have to find a common denominator? When you're adding or what? Subtracting. Write that in your notes. When adding or subtracting fractions, you have to have a common denominator. Period. When adding or subtracting fractions, you have to have a common denominator. Period. 
Then, after that, right, to get the common denominator, multiply the opposite denominator's value. Multiply the opposite denominator's value to both the bottom and top. Okay, so what do I get on this one? Someone, tell me what it is, Derek. What would this be? Or, not Derek, I keep calling you that. Dylan. Dylan. What do I get? Uh, Four times two is? Eight. Over? Uh, Twelve. Twelve. What's this one going to be? Nine, uh, nine over what? Twelve. Twelve. Now, here's the interesting part. If I was to split this into twelves, okay, if I was going to split this into twelves, so all the way around would be 12 twelfths. How many twelfths is there here? Six, Six. twelfths. Do you agree with that so far? Uh, because there's 12 twelfths all the way around. So this would be how many twelfths? Three twelfths, right? So, so far I've got three, now I've got six, and then I got a little bit more. It's not gonna be all the way to another three, which would be nine, but it's gonna be two more twelfths. So I've got three, six, plus two, sorry, should give me what? Eight. Eight twelfths, is that the same as two thirds? Yeah, so eight twelfths is the same as two thirds. Remember, if you keep going all the way around, this will be twelve. Okay, how about this? Break it into twelfths. So how many twelfths is to here? Six. Everybody agree with that? How many twelfths is to here? Three. I mean, I'm not perfect because the circle's not perfect, but... And then this would be what? Nine. So this is nine twelfths. That's why we want a common denominator. Now we have broken it into parts of twelve. You can break it into this. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two. And then one, two, three. Oh, sorry, I went too many there. Two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. So there's my 12. So now I'm just adding all the pieces together. So how many pieces of 12 do I have here? How many do I have? How many pieces of 12? Eight. Eight pieces of 12. How many pieces of 12 do I have here? Nine. So should I add the 12s? No, just add the tops. That's all I add is the tops when you're done. Because you've broken it into pieces in 12s. So 8 plus 9 is what? What is 8 plus 9? 17 what? Or 12. 12s. In fact, I could actually just put little teeny pieces here. See, this is 1 12, right? And how many of these pieces would I have? 13. 17 of these little pieces. Okay, so, so 17 of these little pieces. So that's how many I have. Is it more than one? Is 17 twelfths more than one? Yeah. And I could write this as an, this is an improper fraction. That's what this is called. Or I could write it as a mixed number. I'm usually just going to leave it as an improper fraction. Because I'm really just counting how many pieces there are. But I could write this as a mixed number. What is it as a mixed number? Well, as a mixed number, I just divide 17 by 12 and take the remainder. So 12 into 17 goes how many times? Once. What's 1 times 12? 12, and then 17 minus 12 would be 5. So it's 1 and 5 twelfths. That's the answer. You have a full pie plus 5 more twelfths of a pie added together. You with me on that? So that's how it works, okay? Now, let's do the subtraction and think about what we're going to get. So now think about direction, still number line stuff, right? I go 2 thirds positive. And then I'm going to come back, what? Three-fourths. Is three-fourths bigger than two-thirds? Yes or no? Is three-fourths bigger than two-thirds? Yes. Three-fourths is bigger than two-thirds. So if I come back negative, I will end up in a negative direction if I'm coming back that way. Do I do it the same way, though? Yes. What should I times the three by, top and bottom? Okay, I'm going to ask somebody. A uh, person sitting behind Gannon. What's your name? Brianna, what should I times top and bottom of the three by? Four. Four, good. And the reason I'm timesing by top and bottom is because I'm not really changing it, okay? Uh, what's your name? Because now people have kind of moved seats. What's her oh, name? Corinne. Yeah. Corinne, go ahead. What will I get? Four times two is? <clears throat> eight over 12. What do I times that four by right there? Uh, what's your name? Kitten Blue. Dason. What is it? Dason. Dason. So what do I times top and bottom here by? Four. <coughs> Three. 
Ah, it's the opposite denominator. Sometimes you buy three. Now, uh, let's see here. Chancy, should I take 8 minus 9 and should I do 12 minus 12 or should I just do 8 minus 9 and put it over 12? Right, 8 minus 9 is negative 1 over 12. I'm negative 1 12 in the direction I'm going because I have 2 thirds positive direction, negative 3 fourths positive direction, or negative direction. I'm going to end up at negative 1 12. Okay? That's my answer. I'm done. Did I add here and subtract here? Yes. So I needed a common one. Denominator. That's the only time when you're doing fractions you need common denominators is when you're adding or what? Subtracting. Everybody got that? Okay, now let's try multiplying. To multiply, you just multiply straight across. Now I can reduce, and I'll show you that here in a second. But I multiply straight across. What's 3 times 2? 6. And 3 times 4? 12. 12, which is 1 half. Everybody got that? Just reducing it. Six goes into both evenly, one half. Everybody got that? Okay, now, I could what we call cross-reduce before we start, and it just makes things smaller. I'm for cross-reducing, you can see it, because it'll make things a lot smaller. In other words, does two divide four? That's called cross-reducing, you're dividing. Yes, how many times does two divide four? Two. How come I put a one there? Again, I'm doing the same thing to the top that I'm doing to the bottom to keep them equal. Divide 2 by 2, what do you get? 1. Divide 2 into 4. 2. And you see that's why I have 1 half there? How about these? Well, they reduce. One, one. Yeah, it's going to be 1 and 1. Very good. Nice job. 1 and 1. Now times straight across. 1 over what? 2. I'm done. See, I like to cross-reduce and make things smaller first, okay? Makes your math easier. So if you see that, go ahead and cross-reduce. Do you have to? No, I can just multiply straight across, and then what? Reduce. It just makes the numbers bigger, okay? But it'll, it'll work either way. Now, how do we divide fractions? This is the one that kids get confused on a lot, but you have to see it's probably the easiest thing to do. How do you divide, how do you divide fractions? Can you actually divide fractions? No. Okay, you can't really divide fractions. So what do we do? Well, we take the reciprocal and multiply it to the numerator. What's the reciprocal? When you're flipping it, right? So you're gonna flip the three-fourths. Don't flip both. This is where kids make a mistake. They think they should flip both fractions. Leave the two-thirds the way it is. See, I didn't flip that. Which one am I going to flip? I'm going to reciprocate the denominator to the numerator. So I'm going to multiply by 4 what? Thirds. Now let me show you what I'm really doing. I'm really timesing this by 4 thirds, and I'm timesing this by what? 4 thirds. What do I get here? What's 3 fourths times 4 thirds? That's just 1. What's, what's uh, Brittany over 1? Still Brittany. No matter what it is over 1, it's that number, right? So really, this top will be the answer, because it's over 1. That's why I'm really flipping and multiplying both the bottom and the top. We just simply simplify it, because we know this is going to be 1, and write it that we're times it to the top. But really, you're times it both to the bottom and the top. Okay? Now can I multiply this straight across? Can I cross-reduce anything? Does 3 go into 2? Does 3 go into 4? No, nah, so I can't cross-reduce. So just multiply straight across, what do I get? You get 2 times 4 is 8. 3 times 3 is 9. That's that answer. That's that answer. Okay, so all of them a little different, but all of them fairly similar. What you do? When you're adding or subtracting, got to have a common what? Denominator. When you're multiplying, you multiply straight what? Across. Don't worry about the common denominator. 
Okay, I see a lot of kids when they go to multiply, they think they need a common denominator. You don't. You don't need a common, multiple, common denominator when you multiply. When you divide, you don't really divide. You actually end up multiplying the reciprocal. In other words, you're going to flip it and times it. Okay? Let's try one more of those. Okay? Sometimes it's written this way. Now what should I do? Uh, what's your name? Matilda, what do you think I should do there? Which one should I flip? The three fourths. You always flip the second one. Okay? So we end up with five ninths. And then instead of divide, what will I write? Times. I'm going to multiply by what? Four what? Thirds. Again, I look and see if anything will divide down. Five and three, nope. Four and nine, nope. So I just multiply straight what? Across. So again, what will I get as I multiply across here? 20. And here? Uh, 27. Will that reduce? No. And in fact, you know it wouldn't reduce because nothing here reduced. So that's it. 20 over 27. That's my answer. Okay? All right. So next time your parents yell at you, what should you say? No, say, I already know how to divide fractions. James, what do your parents say to you? You're not loved. Oh, well, besides that. <laughs> they say, usually, what? How many flipping times do I have to tell you? Because you don't listen. So they'll say that, and then you just say, what? I already know how to divide fractions. Calm down. Uh, you should tell them. So just you know, throwing that out there. OK, now let's do a couple real world ones. OK? This is kind of interesting. So now it says we got these triathletes. OK? 72 start the race. Do you guys know what a triathlon is? What's a triathlon? It's a multi, it's like a multiple event, almost like a track meet, but what are the typical people. three things? Crazy. You run, you bike, swimming, and you swim. Bike and swim. Okay. Run. And run, sorry. Run. So swimming, biking, swimming. And you are swimming, biking, running, usually in that order. Swimming, usually first, then biking, then running, if you've ever been a triathlete. So we have 72 triathletes start the race. And they're going to start the triathlon. A third drop out after swimming. They're just like, dude, I'm tired. I'm done. Okay? Then we have one sixth of those left drop out after the bike portion. They're just like, I can't handle it no more. I don't want to even do the running. Okay? And then how many actually finish the race? That's the question. Okay. How do we do this problem? Here's where kids can, so I can do the following, right? I can take 72, I can minus a third, or I can divide by a third, or I can times by a third. Which one do you think I should do? And this is a key idea. I want to take one third of 72. That's really what I want to do, right? So think about this, just generally speaking. If a third drop out, am I going to have more than 72 in the race? No. I'm going to have what? Less than 72. Am I going to have less than half of 72? No, I'm going to have more than a half because I only a third have dropped out. So whatever number I get, it better be you know bigger than what's half of 72? What's half of 72? 35? So it better be bigger than 36, but it better be littler than what? 72. If it's not, you've got it wrong. So think about where you should be. What do you think I should do with these two then? Should I add them, subtract them, multiply them, or divide them? What do you think? If I want a third of 72, what should I do? You actually multiply this. Okay? So anytime you want a third of something, you multiply by the fraction. Because what you're really doing is you're dividing the 72 people by what? By three. That's a third of them. But because you multiply by one third, you're going to get the same value. What is 72 over? How do I make 72 a fraction? Just put it over 1. 
Okay. Will 3 divide 72 evenly? What's 7 plus 2? What's 7 plus 2? 9. If, it, if the sum of the digits is divisible by 3, then the number is divisible by 3. So 7 plus 2, which is 9, is divisible by 3, then 72 has to be divisible by 3. So let's go 3 into 72. How many times will it go? You need a calculator, you can use it, but 3 into 7 goes twice, right? And then there's going to be one left over. 12, 3 into 12 goes 4, so that's 24. This is what? This is going to be a 1. So how many people are, so how many people dropped out? So this is number of dropouts. Number of dropouts. How many did we get dropping out? 24. Okay, 24 dropped out. How many are left in the race? We expect it to be more than 72. Or sorry, more than 36, right? So what would we do with the 72 and the 24? Subtract. Now I subtract, right? So I have 72 minus 24. How many people are in the race at this point? 48. Is that 28? No, it's more than that. 48. 12 minus 4, that's 8, and 48. Okay, 48 are still in the race now, aren't they? Okay, so 24 drop out. These are my dropouts, but I still have 48 in the race, which is what I figured. It would be somewhere between 36 and 72, right? Now we got 48 people. They're going. How many of them are going to drop out after the bicycle race? 36. So what should I times 48 by? Times it by 1, 6. This will be the number dropping out. Number drop. Okay? So what happens with the 8 and the 40 and the 6? Are those divisible by each other? Somebody check that on a calculator. Do 48 divided by 6. Grab a calculator there, Kaylee, for me and do that. It's 8. It's what? It's 8. Some of you know that already. So it's 8. Okay? So how many people dropped out? 8. 8. How many did I have? 48. We're in the race, right? Minus the eight to drop out, how many are left in the race? 40 people finish that race. Out of the 70, out of the 72 that started. Okay? A third of them dropped out after the first part, 24 people. A sixth of them dropped out after the second part, eight people. How many were left in the race? 40. Okay? Can you do one of those type of problems on your own? Let's see if you can. I'll write another one, okay? We have uh, Ann Elmo, they sell on pheasant hunting day, which is the weirdest time in the world to do this, but they do this. The Daughters of the Utah Pioneers or whatever, they have a bake sale and they sell pies. So let's say that they start off with 124 pies, okay? In the first two hours, so in the first two hours, they sell two fifths of the pies. Okay. In the next three hours, oh, wait just a second, I don't want to do two. My bad. Let's do two, let's do three, eight. Let's do that. Because otherwise it won't divide evenly very well. In the next three hours, they sell three-fourths of the rest of the pies. How many pies that will they have left after five hours? See if you can do that. Everybody try it right now. Okay, I had 124 pies to start with. I want to do, I want to take three-eighths of the pies that are going to be sold in the first hour. And then I want three-fourths of what's left sold the rest of the time. How many pies are left? I'll give you a minute to try. What should you do to find out how many pies are left after that first two hours? What should I do with the 3 8 and the 124? What do you think? Add, subtract, both player, divide. That's all you got choices. How many of you think you should add? 
How many of you think you should divide? How many of you think you should multiply? How many of you think you should subtract? How many of you aren't thinking? At least somebody's honest. Think about what you should, what you should do. What should I do with the 124 and the 3 eighths? If you need to, grab a calculator, by the way. Okay, what should I do? Uh, the, 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 what's your name? Deja. Deja. Pretty close. Deja, what do you think I should do? What? Times. Times. So I'm going to times 24 by 3 eighths. I'm going to multiply those. Okay. Uh, James, what will I get when I do that? Does, 20, does 8 go into 124? Yes. Yeah. Huh? Yes, but. <coughs> yes, but what? You got the 124 over the 1. Okay. Reduce 8. So 8 goes into 124. How many times? A lot. 124 divided by 8. Someone do that on the calculator for me. 15.5. Is it 15.5? Mm -hmm. Dang it. This might not work out very well. It's all right. I guess they sold a half a pie. 13.5 times what? Is that what you got was 13.5? 15.5. 15.5. Oh, 15.5. 15.5, when I divided that, times what? 3. So it'd be 15.5 times 3. Someone do that on the calculator for me. 46.5. What is it? 46.5. So I had 46.5 pies sold. I've got to subtract that from how many did I have to start? 124. Do that on the calculator. I had 124 pies. I sold 46 and a half pies. How many pies are left? 77.5. 77 point what? 5. 5. Three fourths of these are going to sell. So what should I times this by? 3 over what? 4. That's how many are going to sell. All right. Now what? Times that. Can you do that on a calculator? Yeah, there's a little key that lets you do three fourths, by the way. So do 77.5 times, and then you're going to hit three, and then there's this little, I don't know what that key is called. It's like a fraction key. You're going to go three fourths, right? And, or you could just do this 77.5 times what? Three. Times three, and then divide by what? Four, and your calculator will do that too. So what did you get either way? What does this equal? It's going to be a decimal of some sort. What is it? 58.125. <coughs> That's how many what? That's how many sold. So I got to take 77.5 minus what? 58.125, do that on your calculator, 77.5 minus 58.125, and what do I get? 19.37. 19.375. And this is like 3 eighths. I'm going to eat that 3 eighths of the pie. <laughs> and how many pies are going to be left? 19. 19 pies, because I ate the 3 eighths. That's 3 eighths. Okay, so there's about 19 pies left to be sold the rest of the afternoon. Which is about right, honestly. They end up with less pies by the end of the day. Because you're selling a little bit each time. Okay? Let's think about a board now. This happens all the time, too. Um, in construction and things like that. Okay, you got this 24 foot board. You're going to cut it into three quarter foot pieces. Everybody got what we're saying? 24 foot board. You're cutting it into three quarter foot pieces. Do you think you're going to have more or less than 24 pieces when you get it all cut up? What do you think, Tommy? Okay, I got a 24 foot length board. I'm cutting it into three quarter length pieces. How many three quarter length pieces can I get out of a 24 foot board? Will it be more or less than 24? Less. If I cut it into three quarter foot pieces, I'm going to end up with less than 24. Oh, more. I'm going to end up with more. Can you see that? That's important to have that in your brain. If I'm going to do this, I'm going to have more. So, how do I do that? How do I actually do this? 
What should I do? Well, it's easy if you think about it. You're taking a 24 foot board and you're dividing it into what? Three quarter inch pieces, yes. Triangular action. Yeah. So think about this. You're dividing it into three quarter inch pieces. So McCausher, I should divide by what? 24 divided by what? Three fourths, right? You're just dividing it into three quarter inch pieces. Okay. Uh, what's your name? In front of Gannon? Tiana. What is it? Tiana. 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 Okay, so what should I do to divide three fourths and 24? Flip the three fourths. Yeah, I gotta flip them times. How many flipping times do I have to tell you? All right, I'll flip them times. So I'm gonna put that and multiply. Okay. Now, does three go into twenty-four? Yes. Yeah. How many times? Uh, eight. Eight times four is thirty-two. What? Pieces. I'm gonna get thirty-two pieces, three-quarter lengths, out of a twenty-four foot board. Are you with me on that? So that's that's how I did that. Did I expect it to be more than the length of the board? I did, because I'm cutting it into shorter pieces. You see what I'm saying? Now, how about the next one? We got a 36 foot board. We're cutting it into one and a half foot pieces. Should I get more or less than 36 pieces? Less. Less, because it's more than one, right? It's more than one per foot. So I'm going to have less pieces. So again, I expect this one to be less. However, the math is the same. I take 36 and I'm dividing it into one and a half. Now, what do I want to do with one and a half? Make it into an improper fraction. How do I do that? This is important to understand. What's your name in the back? Adam. Adam, how do I turn a half into a fraction? One and a half into a fraction. Two times what? One, one plus one. What's two times one plus one? Three. Three halves. Okay, everybody see how I did that? Let's try this one. Five and one sixth. How would I turn this into a fraction? Five times six. Five times six is? Thirty. Thirty and then plus the one. So I end up with what? Thirty-one over six. Thirty-one over six. Some kids get messed up when they do this and they think, oh wait, it's negative, and then I'm going to add. Don't do that. Just because you're, this is only telling you the direction. So I'm going to multiply here. 4 times 4 is? What's 4 times 4? 16. 16. And then I'm going to add the 3 and get 19 fourths in a negative direction. You see what I mean? So you still multiply and add, even if it's negative. Okay, 